In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a 3D model of this screwdriver. The Blender version that I'm using is 4.1. We're going to start by making the tip of the screwdriver. We'll use the cube for this. So press Tab for edit mode, then press A to select all. Next I'll scale on the Y axis by pressing S and then Y. As I scale, I'm holding down the control key which will allow me to snap to the grid. I'll be doing this frequently throughout the video. If you look up in the top left corner, you can keep track of how far I'm scaling or moving things. In this case, I'm scaling by 3. Next, switch to face select mode and select the left end face. Scale it on the Z axis by pressing S then Z and then I'll shrink it down to 0 0.1. Then I'll select the right end face and press S and then X to scale it on the X axis. I'll scale it by 1.5. And then I'll press S and then Z to scale it on the Z axis. This time I'll scale it by 0 0.8. Now press Shift A and add a mesh cylinder. Rotate it on the X axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Now I'll move it on the Y axis by pressing G, then Y, then 7, then Enter. This cylinder has 32 vertices, and so we want this cube to have the same number of vertices. To do that, I'm going to add some loop cuts. To add a loop cut, press Ctrl R. I want 12 loops, so I can just type 12 and then left click and then right click. Then press Ctrl R again. This time I want two loop cuts, and so I'm just going to use the scroll wheel to select two, and then left click and then right click. Now switch to Vertex Select Mode. The cube now also has 32 vertices around the outside edge. Next we're going to remove all of the faces on the right side of this cube. So box select all of the right side vertices, press X to delete and select faces. Next we're going to connect the cube to the cylinder. So hold down the Alt key and click on the center of an edge between two vertices to select this ring of vertices. And then to add the cylinder's vertices to the selection, hold down Shift and Alt and click on an edge from the cylinder's ring of vertices. Then from the Edge menu, select Bridge Edge Loops. Now we have a clean connection between the cube and the cylinder. So let's continue shaping this. So press 7 on the number pad for top view. Then press Z and select Wireframe. Now box select the center two vertices. Since I'm in wireframe view, this will select the vertices on the top and the bottom. Now enable proportional editing. We're going to move the vertices on the Y axis, so press G and then Y. Now use the scroll wheel to resize this circle to the approximate width of the screwdriver tip. Then drag it up by a distance of 2.5 and left click. Now disable proportional editing. Next, select Face Select Mode and then switch to Solid View. Then hold the Alt key and click on one of the cylinder edges to select the ring of faces. Since these edges are not straight, we're going to rotate the cylinder on the Y axis a little. So press R, then Y, then Rotate. That looks better. Now box select these top faces. You'll notice that this top surface is not flat, so we're going to flatten it. To do that, scale on the Z axis by pressing S, then Z, then 0, then Enter. Now press 3 on the number pad to switch to side view. We'll do this next part in wireframe view. We'll rotate by 5 degrees on the X axis by pressing R, then X, then 5, then Enter. The reason that I knew 5 degrees will work is because that's what worked when I previously made the screwdriver preparing for this video. Now we'll raise this surface up a little on the Z axis by pressing G then Z. We'll raise it up until this section is flat. Next I'll repeat these steps for the bottom side. So I'll press Ctrl along with 7 on the number pad for bottom view, then switch to solid view. Select these faces. Switch to Side View, switch to Wireframe View. Flatten it by pressing S, then Z, then 0, then Enter. Then rotate it minus 5 degrees by pressing R, then X, then minus 5, then Enter. 
Then move it down by pressing G, then Z. Again, I'm moving down until this section is flat. Next, we're going to scale the very tip a little. So box select these front faces. Then scale on the Z axis by pressing S, then Z. Scale it down by 0 0.5. Now switch back to solid view. We're going to be using the subdivision surface modifier to smooth out the mesh, so let's add that now. So press tab for object mode, and then add the subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to increase both of these numbers. Then right click and select Shade Smooth. You'll notice that our shape has lost a lot of its detail. So let's tab back into edit mode and sharpen some of the edges. We'll start by sharpening the outside edges. So switch to edge select mode and select this edge. We're going to move it all the way up. We can do that by pressing G twice. If you only press G once, the move is not constrained. By pressing it twice, the edge will move along the edges to which they are connected. This top edge is now sharper. I'll do this again for this edge. And also for the two edges on the other side. Now we'll use loop cuts to sharpen some edges. So press Ctrl R to add a loop cut here. Then add another one here. And another one here. This shape is looking good. Next, switch to face select mode and select the back face of the cylinder. Now we're going to extrude, so press E, then 50, then Enter. Then press Ctrl R to add a loop cut to the right edge to sharpen it. I'll tab into object mode to get a good look at what we have. Now is a good time to save what we have so far. Now we're ready to make the handle of the screwdriver. So press Shift A and add a mesh circle. You can't see it because it's inside the tip of the screwdriver. Now change the number of vertices to 16. Then rotate it on the x-axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Then move it on the y-axis by pressing G, then Y, then 35, then Enter. I'll press the period on the number pad to zoom in and center it. Now tab into Edit Mode and switch to Vertex Select Mode. Then press A to select all. Now extrude on the Y-axis by pressing E, then Y, then minus 5, and then Enter. Next, press E to extrude and then right-click. What we've just done is to extrude by a distance of 0. This gave us another set of connected vertices. Now we'll scale these new vertices by pressing S, then 4, then Enter. Now we'll extrude again by pressing E, then Y, then 30, then Enter. We now have the start of a handle. Next, press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here. Then switch to face select mode. Hold down the Alt key and click here to select this ring of faces. We're going to extrude all of the faces outward. To do that, from the face menu, select extrude faces along normals. Then type 1 and enter. Now press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here. Then switch to face select mode, hold the Alt key, and click here to select this ring of faces. We're going to scale on the X and Z axis, but not the Y axis. To do this, press S, then Shift Y, then 1.1, then Enter. Now switch to Edge Select mode, hold the Alt key, and select the end ring. Like we did before, we're going to extrude a distance of 0. So press E and then right click. Then press S and scale it down. Then press E and right click again. Then press S and scale down. Now press F and select Make Edge Face. Now we'll put a rounded edge on the end of the handle. So enable proportional editing. 
Then move on the G axis by pressing G, then Y. Use the scroll wheel to size up the circle, then type 2 and enter. Then disable proportional editing. This right side portion of the handle is going to be a rubber grip on the handle. Let's add more detail to it. So press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here. Then switch to face select mode. Hold the Alt key and select this new ring of faces. Then from the face menu select extrude faces along normals. Then type point 3 and enter. Now press Ctrl R and add a loop cut near the right edge of the handle. Then switch to face select mode. Hold the Alt key and select this ring of faces. Now we're going to limit this selection to every other face. We can do that from the Select menu by choosing Check or Deselect. Then from the Face menu select Extrude Faces along Normals. Then type minus 0.5 and Enter. Then type E and right click. This adds another set of vertices with a distance of zero. This will add extra definition to these edges after we add a subdivision surface modifier later on. This is the plastic portion of the handle, so let's work on it now. Hold the Alt key and click here to select these faces. Then press E and extrude by 1. Now press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here. Then press Ctrl R and add another loop cut a little to the right of that. Now scale it by pressing S, then point 8, then Enter. Next, press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here. Then switch to Face Select mode, hold the Alt key, and select these faces. Then from the Select menu, choose Check or Deselect. Then from the Face menu, select Extrude Faces along Normals. Then type minus 0.5 and Enter. Next, press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here and drag it all the way to the left. Then press S to scale and scale it by 0.8. Now we're ready to smooth things out. So tab into Object Mode and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. I'll increase both of these. Then right click and select Shade Smooth. Now tab back into Edit Mode. Next, we'll add loop cuts to sharpen some of the edges. So press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here and drag it all the way to the right. Then press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here and drag it all the way to the left. Then Ctrl R and drag it to the right. Then Ctrl R and drag it to the left. Then Ctrl R and drag it to the right. Then Ctrl R and drag it to the right. Then Ctrl R on these faces and drag it all the way to the center. Then Ctrl R and drag it all the way to the outside. We're finished modeling the screwdriver, and so now let's set up the materials. I'll press Z and select Material Preview. This is not what the final result will look like, but it will give us a general idea of how things are looking. The first material that we'll set up is the plastic handle. So select the Material tab and add a new material. Then set the base color. I'm going to use a roughness of 0.2. I want the material to be transparent, and so I'll set the transmission weight to 1. Next we'll set up the rubber handle. We need to select the faces that will receive this material. So switch to Face Select mode, hold the Alt key, and select this ring of faces. We're going to expand the selection to nearby faces by holding the control key while pressing the plus key on the number pad. I'll do this a total of eight times. If you don't have a number pad, go to the select menu and choose select more less and then more. Now in the material tab, click the plus button and then click here to add a new material. Set the color to black and the roughness to 0.4. To apply this material to the selected faces, click the Assign button. We're done with the handle, so tab into Object Mode. Then select the metal part of the screwdriver. For the material, set the color to gray, 
set the metallic value to 1, and set the roughness to 0 0.3. Next, I'm going to join these two objects together. So with the metal part already selected, press Shift and click the handle to add it to the selection. Then press Ctrl J to join them into one object. Now press N to open the Properties panel. If you look here, you'll notice that the screwdriver is 65 meters long. We're going to reduce its size to something more reasonable. So press S to scale and type .0035 and then Enter. Now it's 0 0.227 meters long, which is about 9 inches. Next, set the location Y value to 0 to put the screwdriver at the center. Now press the period on the number pad to zoom in. I'll press N to close the Properties panel. I'm going to add a quick surface for the screwdriver to sit on. So I'll press Shift A and select a mesh plane. Then I'll switch to Side View, press G and drag it down. Then I'll add a new material, choose a color, and set the metallic value to 1. To see it in Render View, press Z and select Rendered. Then select the light source. With the Data tab selected, choose the sunlight and set the strength to 5 and the angle to 50 degrees. Next, we'll select the Cycles Render Engine. To do that, select the Render tab, and for the Render Engine, select Cycles. If you have a supported GPU, then you can choose that to speed up the rendering time. Here are a few of the renders that I did from different angles. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.